When the average anime watcher is asked, what is the greatest anime of all time? The first answer is generally One Piece. Then Naruto, Bleach, Fairy Tail, Death Note, Code Geass, Attack on Titan, Sword Art Online, Dragon Ball Z, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, Pokemon, or Avatar. But if you were to ask a hardcore anime fan, they'd always tell you it's Cowboy Bebop, Berserk, Trigon, Evangelion, or the original Full Metal Alchemist, because they have no taste. Everyone else will say it's Hunter x Hunter 2011. An odd name, because there's no hunting, and the silent X is to mislead you into believing it's a high school DXD or Kiss X Sis type show. When on the contrary, the only women in this series are Palm, the Yandre with an obsession for little boys, and Bisky, basically Mrs. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hasta la vista, baby. Who's into little boys. The greatest romance of the series is in fact between Hisoka, the antagonist, and the little boys. It's the ultimate recommendation for those Boku no Pico fans that just don't know what to watch next. <laughs> Meet the protagonist, Gone Freaks. One of those rare OP shonen protagonists whose mom is gone and forgotten, but whose dad is a badass dick who left him because he's lazy and doesn't give a shit. But who Gone wants to meet nonetheless, because, uh... Something needs to drive the series from arc to arc. Starting with the Hunter Exam arc, where dozens of people die each year for a Hunter's license that essentially does nothing as proven by Gon, who sells his almost immediately after risking his life to procure it. During the exam, Young Freaks makes great friends with great original goals, like Kurapika, kill the ones that killed his clan to steal the clan's eyes. Killua, the obligatory cooler best friend character who tags along because uh, they're the same age or something. Or Leorio, whose goal is to make money, who is too useless and weak to win on his own, so Killua is conveniently sent home in his stead. Focus on Killua as the three friends spend an arc of time to try to get him away from his sadistic family when he ends up just leaving on his own. Get reminded how overpowered these 12 year olds are as they take out dozens of powerful opponents with various brilliantly calculated techniques like pushing or chopping. Now watch in surprise when magic is introduced at the end of episode 28 or 38 in the 1999 version to all the characters simultaneously although they're separated. This magic is called Nen. Nobody knows about even though it's shown on live TV. And now that the existence of this power is revealed to the protagonists, everyone seems to know how to use it. Lucky they never heard of it during the exam arc. After beating three cripples, all four protagonists meet up in New York City, where Gon is replaced by Kurapika for 20 episodes. As the protagonists make the greatest shonen arc of all time, this is when the Phantom Group was revealed, an evil organization cooler than Tartaros and the Espada put together. In fact, their two episodes during the 75 episode Chimera and Dark were the highlight. Then there was the Greed Island training arc, a cannon arc that was on par with Bleach's Bounce arc, except there was no fighting, only uh, training. And where Ging proved his dickishness once again by lying and sending Gon to Kite instead of himself. Watch as Gon becomes really attached to Kite for no apparent reason, because Madhouse somehow forgot to put in the first episode of the 1999 version, which would explain the anger felt by Gon when he plot armored the f*** out of Pito, who by the way had more development than Gon. Enjoy a 30 episode final battle, dragged out by the worst narrator of all time, but only taking about 10 minutes for the in-show characters. Hail Kim Jong-un in frustration. When you realize the entire battle was pointless because they just nuked the bad guys in the end anyway. And those that survived the explosion died of the radiation poisoning afterwards, making Dumbledore's final battle history's most epic anime fight that accomplished absolutely nothing. With Dumbledore gone, Hogwarts needed a new headmaster, so the elite furries were called in to reteach us anything we may have forgotten during the Chimera Ant miniseries. Like, Ging is a dick. A full episode telling us the backstory of a koala reminding us of Gyro's wasted episode. And that Leorio, so useless, even his best friend voted against him. Oh yeah, and Killua's sister grants wishes with no price to cry for joy as Gon finally unites with his father, who tells him of future adventures and to basically fuck off. Unfortunately, we'll never see these future adventures because the writer was on fucking hiatus for the last fucking decade and a fucking half. Starring Natsu Dragneel, Grey Fullbuster, Lucy Hartphilia, Macau, Sugar Boy, Council Toad, Virgo, Ichia, Leon. Urza, Erigor, Elfman, Lullaby, Wakaba, Juvia, Sagittarius, Blue, Lupin the Third, Makara, The Zodiacs, Kane Hikaru, Quattro Puppy, The Exceeds, The Thunder Legion, One Punch Man, and The Butt Jiggle Bandits. And of course, their lethal weapons, coins, playing cards, 
a Game Boy, a fishing rod, a yo-yo, vacuum cleaner, an umbrella, and of course the conventional weapons that don't seem to work, like guns, bazookas, oh yeah, and that one conventional weapon that actually did work. Do you honestly believe mere conventional weapons will be powerful enough to defeat me? Ow, sh Chimera Ants, the complete series. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out my other Honest Anime trailers, like Seraph of the End, Naruto, or Shokugeki no Soma. Please comment to let me know what you want to see next. Ciao.